Okay, hello. I am not sure if this is going to work. Okay, bit of an experiment. I'll, I said I was going to do some videos for our chat, so uh, welcome to another chat. We will um, have a few goes at this. I'm, I'm going to get a new camera and try it a different way. So uh, forgive me if it doesn't work correctly. And the audio is, of course, available as a podcast, and you can find it on my site. Or you could look for um, for my name in the place, wherever it is that you get your podcast from, wherever that may be. So the video is just kind of an extra thing. And uh, we'll see. We'll see if it's uh, more bother than it's worth. But uh, there is a chat window over there. If I do this regularly, people can uh, people can chat to me while I am here, which would be fun. Um, so I'll try and do these things each week and we'll take it from there and we'll see what we've got to talk about. It'd be great to have questions and comments from people. Um, especially newsletter subscribers, members of the Awkward Squad, if you want to send me um, any messages via by replying to uh, any of your newsletters, or you can find my email address uh, on the website, or you can comment on the website at michaelcampling.com. I was a bit distracted because the, uh, the weather is absolutely horrendous today. I think uh, all across the UK we're having bad weather. And uh, in my little room, the rain, you might even be able to hear it pounding against the window. So it's absolutely wild and out there. It's, uh, it's been really cold all day, my, which is why I'm so wrapped up. Um, okay. I thought what I'd do is uh, do a little snippet of, um, of the work in progress, because that seems like quite a nice little extra thing to do. And you've got to remember it's in a, a fairly rough state at this point moment i mean well what i consider fairly rough because i do quite a bit of rewriting i, I rewrite and rewrite you know as much as uh, necessary um until it gets right so it's not the kind of thing that i particularly um would normally share with people so i think most writers don't um share early drafts but you know i'm different and um, here we are in the awkward squad we do things differently so i'm going to read a little bit of it and um not not very much, and then it'll it see if it just sparks anything that we might want to talk about. Um, it might be fun just to do the prologue because I did share the prologue in a newsletter on on the website, um, I believe. But anyway, it's only quite short, and um, with with quite a lot of the Devonshire mysteries, I'd like to put a little pro, uh, prologue in just to give you a bit of a hint at, at what sort of a, a dastardly deeds might be about to unfold because they're kind of a slow burn um, feel to the stories, aren't they? They start off fairly gently, lots of characters to get to meet things. And I like doing it that way. It's the way I want to do it. Um, and in a way they're building on the, you know, it's been a bit of my, they're building on the legacy of, you know, the great people like uh, Agatha Christie and so on. Um, well, yeah, the, sometimes you did start off with a body in the, at the beginning, but not often, as far as I remember. Um, in the shorter stories, I'd say, yes, there are some quite short ones that where, uh, you know, it's calling Poirot, here's a dead body sort of thing. But in other ones, there's quite a lot of getting to know people. They all come together in a country house or on an island or wherever, and we get to meet them. We get to hear, we get to hear their, their relationships and so on. We get to get a hint that... Uh, you know, maybe someone is in love with somebody else. Maybe somebody's jealous of somebody else. And then, of course, it all turns out totally different to that. Um, and I enjoy all that. I enjoy building up that, that kind of uh, cast of characters uh, in, in the stories. And I think people quite like it. It's, it's a gentler pace of story, perhaps, but there's lots to think about. And the mystery readers are cunning people. They are clever and sharp people. And they are there thinking, OK, what is coming up? What does that mean? So somebody does something, somebody has an interaction and they're thinking, aha, well, that might be important. You know, so this stuff isn't padding. Uh, I don't like padding. I don't like stuff just for the sake of it. But I do like to kind of paint a picture. And the sense of place is an important part of the Devonshire mysteries. So wherever they're set, although albeit one of them is in Cornwall, um, I hope I haven't upset anybody in Devon by setting a Devonshire mystery in Cornwall. <laughs> There's a bit of a rivalry between the two counties especially when it comes to the vexed question of which order you put your cream and your jam on your scone. Um, and uh, I, I don't even want to comment on it because I'll get it wrong. <laughs> I'm sure whatever I say, people say, no, you've got that wrong way around. Um, personally, I, I would uh, I would put the cream on first if I was eating cream, but it would have to be a, 
a kind of uh, non-dairy version for me these days because I don't eat cream so um, or any other milky type stuff. So uh, you can get some very good vegan alternatives to these things and um, that's the way I would do it. But um, I kind of like uh, savoury scones anyway. I like the the, the other kind. It's also have herbs in and uh, cheesy things and you can make those vegan as well. Um, which Dan Corrigan does in Mystery in May. He makes some vegan uh, cheese type scones and enjoys, uh, you know, putting one over on the villagers um, because they'll be thinking there's a nice scone and they don't even know that it's vegan. Anyway, and uh, that's one of those things, just if you're interested, that is based on uh, on experience because it's something I've done. And um, yeah, just like Dan, I made some for the um, the celebration of the VE Day, which was a, a lockdown one in our case, though not in Ember Vales, because they didn't have the lockdown. And, uh, you know, who wants to read about that when you have, enjoy enjoying a nice escapist mystery? So I would actually kick off with the prologue. Um, and no spoilers here, but um, it's just short. And you don't know whose voice it's in, so you don't know what, what the character is. You don't know if they're male or female or anything like that. At this stage, you just uh, you just have a have a kind of a first person. And I quite often do that as well in the prologue. I will change the the, the kind of voice just to make sure it's different and it's separate. Okay, so I'll read a little bit. And this book doesn't have a title yet, so it's the fifth one, um, not including Death at Blackingstone Rock, which, by the way, is now free if you want to get the ebook of it you can get it free at my store uh, payhip.com uh, forward slash michael campling i think i've got that right um or you can always find these things via my site michaelcampling.com and there's, there's a there'll be a link there somewhere telling you where to go really just a quick reminder i would like people to enjoy death at blackingstone rock in the way that i intended it to be delivered because it's an epistolary story and the idea is you uh, receive the emails in as near to real time as I could make it. So you sign up for the emails and you just get a little sequence of emails and the story unfolds via those emails. Sometimes you get one a day, sometimes you get uh, three a day, I think. It they're, they're, you know, depends on what Alan and Dan were doing at the time, mainly Alan, because Alan is writing the emails and he sends the emails to Dan, letting him know what's going on in Embervale because Dan isn't there. So it's it's different in those ways. It, it puts Alan centre stage and um, and it's a bit of fun and it's nice. It's all totally free. You just sign up on my website. Um, you have to become a member of the site first, which is free and, and should be quick. And then you sign up for the um, Death at Blackingstone Rock uh, series and you get them that way. And then if you're worried in case you missed any or anything, you can get it, all the emails rolled into an ebook. But if you don't want the emails, you can just get the ebook. It's fine. It is um, it is free. I've never made any money from it because it was always meant to be an extra. Um, I did ask for a, a nominal sort of fee of a couple of dollars at first, and I gave that money to the Dartmoor Search and Rescue team. But that's kind of done that bit. The, the fundraising part of it is over, and um, it would have been difficult in an ongoing way to collect up those, you know, a couple of dollars here, a couple of dollars there. And then I didn't want to miss it. I didn't want to, you know, accidentally keep any money that should have been for charity. So I rounded it all up, sorted it all out, you know, and sent it off to them. And, and they sent a nice email to say they were, you know, thanks for the donation, which was nice because they deserve it. So all volunteers, and if some of them might be out there on a night like this, it, I tried to think what it's like on Dartmoor. It's bad enough down here. We're just on the edge of Dartmoor, but we're, we're not on the really high ground. We're kind of halfway down a, a valley perhaps near the bottom of the valley than the top. So uh, we're not on the really high ground where it must be um, must be very bitter up there tonight. So uh, if anybody needs rescuing, then uh, whew, good luck to them. And uh, good luck to anybody who's out there at all, I think, for any reason. Okay, going back to this as yet untitled story. Um, prologue. <clears throat> Clear the throat. The room is dark, lit only by the blue-white glow from a laptop screen. Is that a mistake on there? I'm sorry. Change that. Look at this real-life stuff. Again, prologue. The room is dark, 
lit only by the glow from my laptop screen. The keyboard clicks beneath the relentless thudding of my two fast fingers. But the reply comes before I've even finished my sentence. I stop suddenly, staring at the screen, and my chest tightens. Oh no. My mind spins and I force myself to breathe, exhaling in a long, unsteady breath. This can't be right, I whisper into the darkness. But the message remains, stark black letters stretched across the glaring white background. No one must know. You'll have to deal with it once and for all. I type my reply, pleading for another option, a way out. Then I wait, my hands curled so tightly into fists that my fingernails nip my skin. I need the pain, need something to tether me to the real world. Because none of this can be happening. It's a bad dream, a fantasy. I can't let it be true or it will overwhelm me, swallow me up in its madness. I have to beat this, escape its inexorable logic. I cannot admit defeat. But a message flashes onto the screen and I can't hold back the moan that creeps from my throat. I read the text from the screen, whispering the words because, despite myself, I have to hear them. I have to know they're real. You know what you have to do, I read aloud. The dead tell no tales. A tremor runs through me, fear mingled with revulsion. In a flash of anger, I slam the laptop shut, then I hang my head, covering my face with my hands, fingertips pressing hard against my eyes until I see starbursts of green. And after a while, my mind grows still. Because I will have to do this. I have no choice. And that's the prologue which uh, I hope sets the scene for a bit of a uh, bit of mystery. And uh, that's the idea of it. And then we have a total change of pace. I'll just do a, a few lines really from chapter one uh, of this uh, of this novel. And you just get a bit of a scene just to let you know uh, what's going on uh, with Dan. And um, by this stage, I think most people will have will have read at least a couple of the other books. I mean, it, they make the most sense in series uh you know, starting with study in stone, but um, I like to think that they can be read in any order. I do hope so. I hope, I hope they make sense on their own. Um, and I think quite a lot, I, I like series that are like that. So it's not a serial as such. It's just a, a series of connected novels in the same kind of setting, the same characters. So This one, he finds um, Dan in Exeter. So I often put like a line at the top just so you know that uh, whether somebody's in Embervale or in Exeter, not always. And um, it might not be necessary in this one, as you will see. So we'll find out what's been happening to Dan since you last met him. <clears throat> I'm a bit out of practice at reading aloud. Goodness me. Dan Corrigan adjusted his tie without breaking his stride as he advanced on his destination. Tucked away discreetly behind Exeter Cathedral, Southern Hay West was stirring into the type of early morning life found in cities all over the world. Smartly dressed people climbed from their cars and bustled toward their places of work. Vans and taxis vied to be the first away from the traffic lights and colourfully clad cyclists pedalled past, their backpacks bulging. No doubt they'd be carrying a change of clothes for the office, a pair of smart shoes and a laptop too. Dan had his own small backpack slung over his shoulder, although in his case, the situation was reversed. He'd brought his sports kit in case he fancied a run after work, and he felt a certain kinship with his fellow travellers. With every stride, every urgent turn of the pedals, they proclaimed a sense of purpose. They weren't here for the shops or the scenery. They were here to work. A bus trundled by, belching exhaust fumes, and Dan smiled. This was more like it. The sense of energy and purpose buzzed all around him. Everyone was going somewhere, and none of them wanted to be late. That includes me, Dan thought, but I've got plenty of time. Dan had been in Exeter for quite a while already, although his appointment wasn't for another half an hour. 
he'd parked down by the quay and he'd spent the time walking through the city, limbering up. And while he'd pounded the streets, he'd felt his senses becoming heightened, his mind growing sharper. It's good to be taking on some real work, he told himself. I'm back. But there was something different about his latest foray into the world of work. He wasn't stepping into his old life. Not quite. There was none of the stress, the underlying anxiety that had driven him to compete until he'd burned himself out. This time, he felt in control. He was independent, a freelance business intelligence consultant. It had taken him almost a year to get this far, a year of taking on small jobs with firms that could hardly afford to pay him properly, a year of hunkering down in cramped offices, drinking bad coffee and fighting to keep his head above water. Months of returning home tired, only to spend his evenings studying to refresh his skills. But he'd been determined to carve out a niche for himself, and here he was, about to start his first big contract. His new life was about to begin. And that's quite a good place to stop. So you get a little sense of the change in Dan's circumstances there. So um, last time you met him, he was um, he was trying to set himself up. Well, he'd set himself up as a sort of a, a small time IT support guy um, because he's he's kind of on a journey really since he he first came in um into the into our, our lives in a study in stone where we met him when he was kind of a bit burnt out which is referred back to here um and he perhaps had some form of breakdown because he was a bit all over the place and a, a bit tetchy and uh, short tempered and uh rather rather rootless rather ankleless not sure what to do with himself and uh it makes sense to sense to me that he would try to sort of get himself back gradually bit by bit kind of rebuild himself uh, on his own terms and so that's what he's doing here he's uh, he's set himself up as a freelancer but a bit more launching back into the corporate world but that doesn't mean he he's uh, he's moving away from Embervale and his kind of small village life so don't worry um i think things have to change for the characters as we go on but you know obviously don't want to uh, throw the baby out with the bathwater so there are different things in this book and there are things that you can rely on um, from previous books and so on. So I think that's probably uh, rattled on enough about that for the moment. I hope you're looking forward to the book. I am really looking forward to finishing it because it's uh, it's been taking me a while and I'm, and I'm still not there yet. There's, there's actually quite a lot of the action still to come, even though I'm quite a long way through the book. It sort of builds up slowly, this one, with lots of little odd things happening through it um and various criminal things going on and uh that voice you heard in the prologue will come back occasionally just to let you know that somebody's scheming away back there so all kinds of things happen there are lots and lots and lots of characters and there are a couple of other investigations going on as i mentioned in a previous chat in the podcast there are also um some police investigations going on and you get those as well so it's i think good value uh, for money for the uh, for the mystery reader Plenty going on, plenty to think about and ponder over and try and work out and see if you can spot any clues, uh, which you may be able to do. But I do like to lead, lead people up the garden path and uh, give you red herrings and so on. So I think that's all part of the rich fabric of a mystery. So um, all that stuff is in there. I will just say a big thank you to uh, all the supporters uh, on coffee.com. Um which uh, you can find via my website. I'll say one more time, michaelcampling.com. If you want to send me a mug of uh, mug of tea, that'd be greatly appreciated. I have, I have none here. Next time I do a video, I'll make sure I get a mug of tea so I can raise it uh, in honour. I was thinking, actually, what I might do just for fun um, on things like Instagram, you can do little videos. And uh, I thought it'd be quite nice to do a little personalised uh, raising a mug of tea to the people who have uh, sponsored me with mugs of tea over time so go through them all and, and do a little personalized greeting um you know just just uh saying perhaps people's first name so you know it's to you uh without uh without uh infringing on your kind of right to privacy and things um just as a nice way to say thank you really because it, it does make a difference and it all helps because obviously there are costs uh involved in putting books together 
things like editors and cover designers. Uh, you need to you need to pay to get good people to do those things, and then there's all kinds of other stuff, um, software and so on uh, that you kind of kind of good to have, and and that kind of thing. Plus the actual T, of course, which is vital writing fuel and uh, keeps me going. And um, yeah, I don't know what I'd do without that. So very vital. Um, so, um, you know, always great to have your support over there. And uh, I will uh, brew, a, brew a mug of old grey in your honour, perhaps, uh, if we do that. So I hope this is all uh, working OK and uh, you've been able to get the video and sound. If not, I'll do it a different way another time. And the sound should certainly be recorded and that will be uploaded later onto the podcast. So thank you very much also to everybody who's joined the site at michaelcampling.com. Uh, it's all free and it gives you access to all the featured photos and you can then comment on the uh, on the site because uh, I don't want members to be able to comment. It doesn't tie you into a newsletter or anything. That's all separate. It's just uh, It's just a way of giving extra value to people and yet keeping it controlled. So it's kind of a, a walled garden type approach. That's all it's about. Uh, there are some people who like to be trolls and things like that. And we don't want those people hanging around, do we? So spoiling it for everyone. So we'll get rid of those. Um, and yeah, there's, there's quite a few hundred members over there. So it'd be nice to have you along. I will um, finish this off now and we'll see if it has worked. So thank you very much for watching or listening. And uh, always good to have your questions and comments on the on the website um, because then it gives me something else to talk about. So if there's anything you'd like to know, anything you'd like me to uh, comment on, please drop me a line. Uh, you know, no question is too small or too silly. I, I can um, happily uh, rattle on a, endlessly about hardly anything at all. So any little question is uh, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, look after yourselves. Take care. Stay safe. And uh, bye for now.